क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hello friends in this video we will discuss a program analysis tools like there are two tools algorithm and flowchart so we'll study of each tool in detail number 1 is called as algorithm now what is algorithm it is a logical sequence of steps prepared for solving a program and all those steps are written in the simple english language like before writing a program first actually we start writing a algorithm so first we need to think about a what are the steps which are involved while writing that program for an example suppose if i am performing addition of two numbers then what are the steps which i will be taking while performing addition of two numbers addition of two numbers means what i will be declaring how many variables so i will be declaring three variables after declaration of three variables what are the variables in which you will be inputting the values so those variables you have to consider after inputting the values then what you will do you will find out the i mean you will do the calculation part after doing the calculation part then you will print the value which you know where you have stored the answer so these are the steps and those steps you have to write in a simple english language then i called all those steps together as what algorithm so first we will see how to write an algorithm for addition of two numbers so my first step involved is what declare variable a b and c so i will take three variables a b and c number 2 is what i will be inputting the values of what a and b so you can simply write here input values of a and b once you will input the values of a and b what you will do you will calculate c and how to calculate c c is equal to a plus b so we will write here calculate c is equal to a plus b now once you will do the calculation part the next step is what you have to print the value of c so you will write print c so this is how i write a algorithm so now see here i you know i the, the steps which i need or which i will be involving by writing a program those steps i wrote in a simple english language and then this thing is called as what algorithm now we'll see one more example of algorithm suppose if i want to exchange the values of two variable then how will i exchange the values of two variable so suppose if i have a variables called as a and b and i have the values 10 and 20 suppose if i want to exchange the values and then after exchanging here a will become 20 and b will become 10 then how to do that for that how many variables you need two variables for the values and one variable is the temporary variable which will temporarily store the value while exchanging so i'll declare three variables a b and t so i will i will write here declare three variables a b and t so i will declare a b and t then store the value of a in t because basically when we exchange the value what we actually do is we do something like this t is equal to a then a is equal to b and then b is equal to t so first we store the value of a inside the t so that's why what i have written store the value of a in t so my t will be 10 year then transfer the value of b to a now what value in b i was having 20 that i will transfer inside a so my a will be 20 and then t may i had 10 that i will transfer back again to b so my b will be 10 so this is actually basically how i exchange or i swap the values of two variable and for that this is how i will write a algorithm so whatever steps basically i will be doing while writing a program those steps you have to write in the simple english language and then i will call it as what algorithm so it is a logical sequence of steps prepared for solving a program and it is a tool to write a job in a simple english language so whatever the steps you are writing in the simple english language i will call it as what algorithm now we have some more examples of the algorithm factorial computation now how to calculate the factorial we have seen the so many programs of factorial like you know in the first we saw a simple program of factorial then we saw a program of factorial using a function then we saw a program of factorial using a recursion so i hope you all know the logic behind the factor logic behind the factorial computation how we calculate the factorial we enter some value uh, and then what we do we perform the repeated multiplication so let us see how to write a algorithm 
algorithm to calculate the factorial read n read n means what the number of which factorial is to be calculated the next is set product to 1 and count to 1 now how basically you will calculate factorial you will take variable now here they have taken variable as product so you will display or you will initialize your product is equal to 1 and you will take one more variable that is count which is initially 1 while count is less than equal to n now suppose n is equal to 5 so it means what you are calculating factorial of 5 so by where while your count is less than equal to what n you will be repeatedly doing these steps what you will be repeat you will be doing compute new product by multiplying count to product so how will you basically do this you will you will be writing product is equal to product into count so product here initially is 1 and your count is 1 so it will be 1 then you will increase your count ka value by 1 so now your count will be 2 2 is less than equal to 5 yes so one more time you will be doing what product is 1 and count is 2 so it will be 2 you will be keep on doing this till your count becomes what 5 so at the end of the everything you will get what product into 5 and the last answer will get stored inside the variable product i'm writing over here suppose if the count will get incremented by 1 then it will become what 3 so it will be product is equal to product into count and now your count will be 3 3 is less than equal to 5 so it will be 2 into 3 will be 6 then in the next step your product is 6 count will be 4 24 then product is 24 count will be 5 120 now your count will become 6 and you will come out of the product i mean you will come out of the loop sorry and you will print the product which is 120 this is how i write an algorithm to compute the factorial so i hope you have understood this algorithm now in the next algorithm is to calculate or to generate the fibonacci series now again fibonacci series how to generate the fibonacci series fibonacci series is like you know your first two terms are very fixed they are what 0 and 1 and the next term which we get that is the addition of first two terms that is 0 plus 1 is 1 then again the next step which we will get that will be what 1 plus 1 is 2 again the next term which i will get is 2 plus 1 is 3 again the next term which i will get is 3 plus 2 is 5 and so on so this is how what is fibonacci series is generated so what you will do here read n and the number of fibonacci numbers to be generated now n is what how many fibonacci terms you want to generate suppose if you want to generate first 15 like terms in the fibonacci series then your n is going to be what 15 if you want to generate only 10 numbers first 10 numbers in the fibonacci series then your n is going to be a 10 so n is basically how many terms you want to print and then first number is a is equal to 0 which i wrote a is equal to 0 and the next number is b is equal to 1 so this is b and initial and count to 2 why count to 2 because first two numbers have already printed that is 0 and 1 so you will start your counting here so your count is 2 while count is less than equal to n now suppose if i am printing first 10 numbers so i will write count is less than equal to 10 you will be repeatedly doing generate a new number how will you generate a new number now new number is your c so that is what c is equal to a plus b so you will write here what c is equal to a plus b once you will get c is equal to a plus b now you have to exchange the terms how will you exchange the terms now while calculating the next term your next term means this term so next term will be your addition of first two terms that will that will be what one plus one so it means what your b will be a a now and your c will be a b now and this will be a new term that is c so that's why what i wrote a is equal to b means your b is a now and b is equal to c so your c is b now and then i will get the new term that is c so again i will write c is equal to a plus b so it will be 1 plus 1 2 after next iteration again this is going to be a a this is going to be a b and this is going to be a c so again you will be doing the same thing and for how long you will be doing the same thing till your count is less than equal to n I mean suppose if i write 
enter the n ka value as 10 then till you get first 10 numbers in the fibonacci series you will be repeatedly doing the same thing so this is how i generate the fibonacci series every time you have to exchange the terms like after every iteration your b will be a so that's why a is equal to b and your c will be b so that's why b is equal to c and then i will be calculating new c that is c is equal to a plus b again you will increment your count and again you will be doing you know again you will be exchanging the terms so this is how i generate the fibonacci series so i hope you have understood how to write an algorithm to perform a particular task now after preparing an algorithm what we do we go for a flow chart but before going to a flow chart there are some characteristics of algorithm which we need to study first characteristics of algorithm is it should be easy and simple in language so like now we saw all my algorithms like you know whatever i had written those, those steps i had written in the simple like you know in the simple english language so it should be easy and simple in the language that it should it should be easily understandable to others it should not repeat the task again and again that is very important you should not write the same thing over again and again every step should be accurate and complete it can be easily modified next is it should be easily be understandable to others so as i said it should be written in the simple english language so that it should be easily understandable to other and should be economical in terms of computer time it should be economical in terms of computer time means what your algorithm should not be too long it should be a like you know it should be a accurate and uh, it should not repeat the task again and again so these are some of the characteristics of algorithm now I hope you have understood how to uh, generate algorithm, how to write an algorithm. Now in the next video, we will study about the flowchart. Thanks for watching the video. For the latest video, please subscribe the channel Ikeda.